of this lubricating jelly that I'm going to use. This is Vaseline. And you simply just want to go ahead and grab a whole bunch of that here. And then we're going to coat each one of these injectors here. Just want to coat it lightly here where the o-ring meets. Just want to give it a light coating there. Same thing over here. And let's do the same thing for all four of these here. Well, here's another one here. Okay, and then also too, you can use some of this jelly to coat the insides of each one of these here. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I made a mistake. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. Next, you want to go ahead and get the injector put back on there. And for this one, here's the stock ones, but the problem with this one is. These injectors have a little protrusion at the end here, and these came with a little different injector clips. So I'm not too sure if I can use this one. I'll try and see. Nope. I don't, so I have to use the same, important, use the same clips that came off the stop. Start with this first one here. As you can see, they have some kind of a cutout there for the protrusion make life a little easier you guys you can actually put the clips in first and then snap them into the fuel rail so like that and then after that just like this here. Okay. and then next you want to go ahead and start inserting this back into the Intake manifold. Yeah. Make sure that all of these are aligned. Okay. Good. Okay, now that we're in there, everything is just the reverse, okay? Backing line back in and plug it back into here. <coughs> Next, you want to go ahead and feed these jeppers back up into here. This is being a little pain here, but three, four, 
get these uh, clips back into place. Get this back in here. <coughs> then, let's see. Oh, you don't want to check this little backing line. See if it's crap or not. Because it's old. cracking so I might want to change it. See right here, this is cracking, so I have another one that I got, I think from the junkyard I can use, let's see here. Picked up this extra line from the wrecking yard, but you can probably just snap the tip off of there. Just yank that out and probably swap it over. Let me see, I think they're the same size here. What do you think? They look kind of similar to me. Put that in there like that. Okay. That works. Alright, so now is the moment of truth. Let's go and start up the vehicle. A little bit rough right now, but it was smoothing out. And there you have it. The computer has to adapt to the changes, so it's using the fuel trim. It just takes time until it's smoothing out. Okay, here's a bit of some interesting things. So I have the OBD2 scanner hooked up and Let's just try to see if it's doing any fuel trim and how much. Um, here's my oxygen sensor reading, so you can get the values from there. That'll tell me. Uh, whether or not the oxygen sensors are working correctly. So as you can see, it cycles between uh, 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, which is normal. Uh, it's supposed to cycle like that and the oxygen sensor 2 which is I think uh, post cat as I'm increasing the RPM it tends to stay quite steady almost at about a 0.7 to 0.8 so ECU is doing its work due diligence there here it is right here, the fuel trim. All right, so short fuel trim is like, how do I explain that? It's like instantaneous, it's what it's wanting to do at the moment. So right now, it's compensating 
uh, almost zero, negative three percent, right? Eventually, this is going to become at zero. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to shift the program to what's called a long field trim, which is what it's going to set the entire map to over the entire rev range. And right now, it's adding an additional 11.7%. See, as I rev it up a little more, I give it more throttle. I'm increasing more intake air, and right now it doesn't need quite as much. But keep in mind, I'm also not under load, so that will change as I drive the vehicle. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Okay, so it's nighttime now, and uh, here we are just idling. I've been driving the car for about a good 25 to 30 minutes um, you know, around town and on off the highway a little bit. And uh, as you can see, we're going to pull up some of the uh, uh, fuel trim levels here. With the long-term fuel trim level, uh, it kind of fluctuates. Uh, now it's showing at 9.4%, but when I first hooked up the scanner about a couple minutes ago, it was at about 11.5% uh, long-term fuel trim. And with the short-term fuel trim, uh, as you can see, it's, it's kind of close to zero. You know, it is taking away a little bit of fuel at idle. Um, and that is expected because they are bigger injectors. Uh, they're 363s instead of 330s. So it's natural that it is going to take away a little bit of fuel at idle. Um, however, uh, with the long term, uh, it's not quite adding as much fuel as I expected it to. But of course, I'm just idling right now. So maybe I'll get uh, a clip of me driving and then we can see what the levels are. So pause and uh... Okay, so here we are driving and then uh... I'll try to see if I can get some data for you here. Let's go ahead uh... Let's see if we can give it some load here. And it looks like it's only adding about 2% of fuel. I mean, that's kind of strange. For the long term, let's see what the short term is doing here. Okay, short term, what are we doing here with short term? Oh, yeah, we're adding, we're definitely adding a lot of fuel here. Let's see here, let's try to give us some load here. I don't know how that turned out. It's kind of hard to see while you're driving here. <laughs> But uh, I just wanted to show you guys, you know, it is doing its job. The computer is doing what it's supposed to be doing. 